<laughs> Hello everyone. Let's just get into it. Draw my life, but on my body. Now, I'm not an artist, but I'm terrible at drawing actually. So please bear with me, but get ready for my whole life story written on my arms. Let's go. Okay, here we go. <laughs> I haven't drawn in so long, and plus, I'm literally writing on skin with my left hand on my right arm. So, this is a recipe for disaster, but hopefully it goes well. Also, I'm using Pip Squeaks markers, which I haven't used since literally grade four. So, um, anyways, I was born in Edmonton, Canada on September 8th, 1999 to my mom and my dad. I don't know how much I weighed, but I was probably fat, a big, fat, ugly baby. All babies are fat and ugly, and I don't like them. When I was like a year old, we moved from Canada to Tewksbury, Massachusetts, USA, baby. My dad got a job. I can't remember what job it was. It was like something with computers, but it was a pretty big move. I don't remember much of it because I was, once again, a little grub. But we moved into this apartment building. We had like a little circle of friends. I'm sure it'd be very weird for me if I actually knew what was going on and not like a little brainless like fetus. But anyways, apparently I really liked rock collecting because there was like beaches and like the ocean, which I did not have back in Canada. And my mom would take me to the beach in Boston, but there was a nuclear reactor next to the water and my mom is scared of nuclear things. So we stopped going there. Now the job that my dad had laid him off. So we had to move back to Canada because we were only there on his work visa. So yes, I did live there, but for a very short time. So when we did end up getting back to Canada, I started school, but before that happened, my parents did end up getting divorced. Now I obviously don't remember it. Once again, one year old, little baby, little grub, doesn't know what's going on. And I've just kind of grown up with it. Like it's never been anything that's ever like made me sad or anything. I've always just been vibing. And plus both my parents lived in the same town. So like it worked out. I would spend a morning at my mom's house then I'd go to school and then I'd come back to my dad's house at night and then vice versa each day. So when I got back to Canada, I started elementary school at a Catholic public school. Yes, those exist in Canada. You can go to public school and have it be Catholic. I don't I don't know how. And it was in a town called Red Deer. It was a tiny little city with like a hundred thousand people, but it had a taco bell, which is like all I need, baby. Maybe that's it. So believe it or not, I was low-key, like really freaking big brained and smart when I was a kid. Like that's all gone now. Like all my brain cells are fried from literally being on the internet for 14 hours a day, but I was smart. And since I was such a smart cookie, that is, that's, get it, I'm drawing a cookie and it says smart with chocolate chips, but then I made the S too big, so just bear with me. I got moved to a smart kid class, but I found out on the very first day that school was now seven hours long compared to the usual three hours a day of preschool. So you wanna know what I did? You wanna know the first crime I committed in this lifetime? I freaking escaped. I ran out of that classroom like it was on fire and the teacher like chased after me and she tried to stop me and she picked me up and I kicked her. I freaking kicked the teacher in the thigh and I left a permanent bruise on her leg. Like, like, it's still there to this day and I feel so bad about it. Like, that is the mark that I left on this poor woman who was just trying to stop me from running into the street. Anyways, grade two to grade four was pretty mundane. Um, The biggest highlight was I had a Tamagotchi and played it a lot and it was really fun. Now, grade five is where it all started, baby. That's when I started my very first YouTube channel. Keep in mind, this was 10 years ago. That means I've literally been posting videos for 10 years of my life. Since the very first time I saw a YouTube video, I was like always amazed by the online world. And ever since then, becoming a YouTuber was like my biggest dream. And now it's really crazy and surreal to me every day that I get to make videos for you guys. Anyways, we'll get way more sappy later. The channel was called Bobber's Video TV. You're probably wondering, what the heck is a Bobber's Video TV? That name came from Bobber's, which was just a word that I made up that I thought sounded funny. It was like Bobber's, Bobber's, but like, I don't know. I was on crap. And then TV came from Shane Dawson's YouTube channel, which was Shane Dawson and TV. I don't know where the video came from. Like, video and TV is synonymous. Like, what's the point? Anywho, my very first video was a Justin Bieber baby parody called Bacon. So instead of baby, 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 uh, it was bacon, bacon. And listen, it freaking popped off. It got 10,000 views in a week. Keep in mind, this is 2010 when no one has social media, no one's on YouTube. So that was a lot for me. So anyways, I kept making videos and I have my best friend named Cooper who also did YouTube videos and we were vibing so much, but then uh, he ended up going to a different middle school than me, which was really sad and tragic, but oh gosh, middle school. <sighs> Here we freaking go. I started middle school not really knowing anyone and middle school is what developed me probably the most for better or for worse. For worse. Grade six was fairly mundane. I was getting used to a whole batch of new people and not many people from my elementary school was there until I got my dog, Kobe, who's my bae until I die. She's scared on the table, so I'm gonna I'm put her back. She was sleeping. I'm a horrible person. I really woke her up for a YouTube video. Good night, Kobe. 
Grade seven, I developed my gaming addiction. Okay, you're gonna see me get very frustrated trying to draw a Minecraft block here. I don't know what went wrong. My freaking brown marker stopped working. The green marker didn't show up on my brown skin. It, this is a mess. Anyways, Minecraft block, you freaking get the drift. In the summers of middle school, I would be playing literally 14 hours of video games a day, like Minecraft, Counter-Strike, Team Fortress 2. And I loved it. I honestly don't regret it because it made me comfortable with making friends online. And I truly just had so much fun playing these games. And I, that's why I have like so much nostalgia for it. Online was fun, but school? not that good. I didn't have a very good friend group and my school was all yeehaws. Like we're talking all farm kids. And to make matters worse, I was like one of maybe 10 brown kids at the school. So that was a really good situation to be in. I'm probably going to make a full video on this in the future, but I was bullied a lot during these years and not like, ah, you have the cheese touch. Like we're talking full on racist bullying. Things that people would say to me that would permanently damage my self-esteem. It got to the point where one year I literally took some of my birthday money and went on Amazon and ordered a skin bleaching cream just so I could be a shade lighter and people would stop calling me curry boy or terrorist. <laughs> I just realized my iPad fell down when I was filming and I just freaked out in the middle of... <laughs> Anyways, yeah, it sucked. Um, and I'm still extremely shy to this day. And I have trouble in groups of people that I don't know that well. But I promise you, once we get to know each other, we will vibe so hard. I love making friends now. It's great. Now, in grade nine, I got a really good freaking group of friends, including this girl who's an exchange student from Mexico named Ivana. I forgot to draw her, but anyway, she's one of those people that I drew. Okay, now on to high school. I met so many cool people there, did so many fun things. I was an exchange student in Japan. I did a school trip to Europe. I had a girlfriend for three months. <laughs> um, but also also, a few bad things happened. My mom got a boyfriend who insisted we all move to a city that was two hours away, just when I had literally settled in with all my friends back in high school. A few weeks before we were gonna move, I decided to stay in Red Deer with all my friends and my dad, and it was honestly one of the hardest decisions I ever made. I ended up spending probably two years apart from my mom, only visiting her like maybe twice a month. And I'm not gonna lie, stuff got really dark. It was like any joy had like been sucked out of my life. Everything just, I felt like everything was just all up in the air and everything just felt so gray. Like someone could come up to me and say they were throwing a party for me and Zendaya was there and my favorite meal of deep fried shrimp was there as well. And I would probably just start crying. Like it went from like sadness to numbness. Like even recently with all these amazing things happening to me, I still have times where I feel like completely numb. All right, anyways, back to the story. <laughs> One big part of high school was I started my YouTube channel, which is this very channel. Bobber's Video TV actually got deleted because my friend freaking hacked it. Then after high school, I graduated and I spent the summer working at this movie theater, which was really terrible, actually. They had me illegally working at 3 a.m. even though I was 17 years old and you can't do that. You can't make children work until 3 in the morning. But after that was done, I literally worked there for like a month. I went to college at 17. It was in the same city that my mom moved to, so that kind of worked out. And it was me living with my mom and her boyfriend and I don't really want to get into it too much but basically he's not in the picture anymore so it was just me my mom and then it was just me I moved out at 18 it was a big big change and living on my own kind of let me like do a lot of new creative stuff so it honestly helped a little bit now you're probably wondering okay uh what about college you haven't really talked about anything of it that's because college was one of the worst experiences of my life I literally did one year and decided I couldn't take it like it was easy and I was getting good grades but I felt like I was going nowhere. Everyone in my classes was either weird or 30 or both and I hated it there. I felt so uncomfortable being there. But now when I dropped out, I didn't have much going for me. I was working part-time at a shrimp restaurant called Bubba Gum Shrimp in West Edmonton Mall. But in the summer of 2018, after saving up for two whole years, I went to VidCon. I didn't know anyone there except for a few people that I just briefly met online and they ended up being some of my best friends to this day. This was before TikTok or anything. I had 2,000 subscribers subscribers on YouTube, but I had to come back home from VidCon and once again, didn't have anything going for me. It was not good. I was dirt broke and the people at my job were mean and my videos wouldn't even crack like a hundred views. But that is when I started TikTok at the end of 2018. This was the single most life-changing moment of my life, not to be dramatic or anything. Within a month, I had 50K followers because of a video where I looked like Noah Centineo. And then of course, the bean video, the infamous bean video that brought me like 300K followers, which was a lot for the time because TikTok was still really underground. And then right after that, I went to my very first playlist live, which was super fun. I got to meet so many of you guys. It was my first experience like meeting some of my supporters and it was such a surreal experience. I could go on and on about all all the amazing people I've met like within this past year, but that would be like a whole freaking 10 part podcast. So I just want to say every person who's been in my life has left a positive impact on me and I love you so much.
After a playlist, I got to travel around America a lot. TikTok sent me to a bunch of different crazy events. I got to go to the MTV VMAs and the MTV Movie Awards. It was freaking crazy. I got to be on the red carpet. Like, what? I hit 1 million, then 2 million, then 3 million. Now we're almost at 4 million. Like, that's freaking crazy. I hit 100K, 200K, 300K, all on Instagram. I got my YouTube play button, which has always been a dream of mine. And just a few days ago, we hit 200K on YouTube. What the freak? But the absolute best part of this all has been you guys. I know it's so cheesy to be like, I love you guys so much. Thank you for the support. But this has truly been the most humbling and rewarding experience. I can never thank you guys enough for all the joy you have brought me. Well, I just realized I didn't do anything on that arm. <laughs> now, I'm probably getting ink poisoning every second that I keep this on. So I'm going to go wash this off. But I just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. I've been wanting to do a drop my life for the longest time. Would have looked better on paper? Potentially. But you get what you get and you don't throw a thing. Um, I'll be back with like, I don't know, an Omegle video or something like that next week on Wednesday. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and turn on all post notifications. It truly does help a ton and you can see some swagalicious videos every Wednesday. Also, make sure to follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. It's all Ben of the Week if you want to check me out on there. I have so much fun content planned for you guys. I cannot wait for you all to see it. With that being all said, hope you have a good Wednesday. Take care. Ben of the Week. It's chill.